He had the key of each room, and just in the middle of the night, he come to my room and uh, have uh, sex with me. Like, uh, and he will be the one to put the schedule. Who will be the one tonight? If you refuse to have sex with uh, with Apollo Kiboloi, what do you think would happen? So when you believe that he is the son of God, uh, and uh, you will do whatever he wants us to do. Uh, including yeah. through psychological instruments. Yes, you yeah. said that. Basta natatutok sa ilang angel of death. When the opportunity presents itself, patay sila. While Lil Dalinda, the assigned worker, returned to the worker's house, when we were alone, I asked if I could sleep on the sofa as it was a sweet room. Instead, he insisted that I would sleep beside him. And even said in Bisaya, said in Bisaya, compatible good again, kaya mo ng color ng atong suot. Translated, we are compatible because our outfits were of the same colors. I was wearing red pajamas with white dots while he was dressed in a red t-shirt and white pajama, white pants coincidentally. His words made me feel uneasy and quite nervous and I saw a different personality in him. Moreover, we had been conditioned to suppress any negative thoughts about him. We are warned, we were warned that any suspicion on him would reflect our own personality Using the words found in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, I quote, To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and consciences are corrupted, unquote. And in those days, absolute obedience was a must. We needed to have an unquestioned loyalty and rever reverence toward him. Sleeping beside a man I believed to be chosen by God was for me then a great privilege an opportunity for a sinner like me. But what followed shattered my sense of faith and trust. Without a word, after turning off the light, he embraced me and dressed me and violated me with his last one act and left me in shock and speechless. He then said, this is the fulfillment of God's revelation. He explained that God had revealed to him that I was to partake in God's life through him by surrendering my body, soul, and spirit. He also mentioned that other girls would go through him in a similar manner. His words were strange, but I was too shocked to respond. I began questioning whether what had happened was indeed God's will or simply a gross abuse of power. He claimed this was necessary for him to understand the human experience and to fully empathize with others. He even told me that he, that he had also been reluctant to accept God's revelation, but as God's chosen one, he had no choice but to act on it. In January 1994, I was in his room with Ingrid Canada, the International Coordinator of the Church, Tacey Dandan, the National Administrator for the Church in the Philippines, and Felina Salinas, his personal assistant. During that meeting, he informed the girls that I would be included in the inner circle. Right there and then, I realized that these women had likely endured similar experiences. Without any words, we shared a mutual understanding. None of us dared speak about what had happened to us. In February 1994, I was sent to Hong Kong, still carrying all the confusions and emotional turmoil. Despite this, I continued to pretend that everything was fine. Despite the insistence of ICC to stay with them, I refused. I made a lot of excuses. Sapagkat, hindi ko po natin na kami nasa Amerika ay masyadong nagpakasasa sa paggasta sa pera na masyadong pinaghirapan ng mga kapatiran at ng mga full-time workers. 
bilang namuno po sa crusades, evangelism at logistics departments, saksi po ako kung paano nagsakripisyo ang bawat isa para lang makapagbigay sa iba't ibang pangangailangan sa simbahan. Nakita ko na kahit pambili ng bigas ng membro, kailangan sakripisyo pa para lang may bigay sa simbahan kahit gugutumin pa ang mga pamilya. Nasaksipahan ko po na kahit last sintabo para pamasahi, kailangang ibigay pa rin, bahala ng maglakad, papuntang simbahan ang mga mahihirap na membro. Hindi kinaya ng aking konsensya ang double standard life. Maraming workers ang napalo dahil sa panunood na ng sini, pero kami sa Amerika, halos linggo-linggo nanood ng sini, bawal sa amin ito dati. Naghirap ang maraming workers at members sa pagkaruling at pagsulisit sa bawat tao sa lahat ng dako dito sa ating bansa. May namatay, may naaksidente, may nakulong, may mga naray pa na hindi na nai-report. Dahil baka hindi paniwalaan at baka makapagfasting pa dahil may kasalanan na itinago kaya napahintulutan nangyari. Lahat may kota, di ba? Napakasakit po sa damdamin ko dahil ako po ang namuno sa mga fundraisings. Marami pong estudyante na Nobyembre pa lang kailangan ng mag-absent sa paralan at ang iba hindi na nakabalik sa pag-aaral dahil inuna ang simbahan the supposed income na dapat ibigay sa mga beneficiaries, sa mga nasabing associations, hindi naman talaga truthfully and honestly na ibigay. Only a little portion of the income was shared to the beneficiaries. Ang ibang workers naman, walang hinto sa pagtinda rin ng mga kakanin na may kota of 500 to 1,000 pesos a day, Monday to Saturday. Ito ang buhay ng mga workers na nasa logistics department. There were reports from my assistant in the logistics department in Manila that I had secretly sent money to my family. Then, she informed me that ministers wrote letters to ACQ and reported that I tempted and fornicated with them during my visits to their satellite churches. I was so shocked to learn the sudden accusations. I also wrote a letter and enumerated the real circumstances of my life with all the ministers I came in contact with in relation to our aggressive fundraising being the National Logistics Coordinator. However, that was not enough. I was then forced to write a long letter of confession, making it appear that I was a sinner who committed all kinds of sins, including those I had committed before joining the ministry. I was sent back here to receive a punishment through prayer and fasting in the guise of spiritual discipline. And the fasting they planned for me was beyond my imagination. It took me seven months to suffer hunger and isolation in the mountain of Tamayong in Kalinan, Davao City. They placed me in a small, dark, elevated room beside a kitchen, separated only by hamacan walls. My bed was rough, made of uneven slabs, with exposed nails pressing into my back as I slept. I woke up this morning in pain, with no beatings, and the cold October nights left me shivering. I requested a blanket and a mat, but I was denied. Every day from 8 to 5 p.m., I followed a strict routine, regardless of the weather, enduring hunger and isolation. No one allowed near me, as I was labeled filthy and deserving of this punishment. Members were forbidden to speak to me. I was physically very weak and so depressed. depressed. I prayed that God would just take my life. Ilang beses po ako na nalangin na sana kunin na lang ng Painoon. That I fi finally clearly understood that the man I had believed to be God's chosen and holy was an impostor, oppressor, and deceiver. He manipulated me using his authority and power as God's anointed. I thank God that he took me out from his bandage, from that ambiguous feeling of fear mingled with so much love and loyalty to my Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Natinokso ko raw si Apolo, kayon kibuloy. 
nakiapid daw ako sa mga ministro. Narinig naman po ninyo yung sa video. Nakipagtalik daw ako mismo doon sa workers' house at nagnakaw daw ako ng 3 million pesos sa sikritong, sikritong buhay at aalis sa kanyang kingdom. Sila ay akusahan na napakaraming kasalanan. He would always exaggerate their weaknesses. At ipaniwala sa mga workers at members na sila ay umalis dahil may mga marumi at mga, napakasama, at mga napakasamang mga tao. His followers only heard his side of the story, which was always filled with lies and twisted truths. Mga napakasamang descriptions para lang ipahiya ang mga nagsalita ng kanilang mga karanasan sa loob ng kanilang kingdom. Mga salitang hindi nababagay sa mga tinatawag na mga citizen ng kingdom of Jesus Christ. Their intention is only to demoralize and warn others of the consequences of defiance. Last August 2021, during one of his television programs, he once again maligned me, broadcasting nationally and internationally that I was a fornicator and an immoral woman, which we have just watched. Salamat po, uh, Ms. Teresita, sa testimonya mo. Isa munang follow-up question ko sa inyo, uh, Ms. Teresita o Ms. Ging, Ate Ging, just for the record, guilty ba kayo dun sa mga krimen na inakusa sa inyo? Yung pagnakaw ng 3 million pesos, yung pag-fornicate sa iba pang mga ministro, guilty ba kayo sa mga iyon? Of course not. Alright, salamat po dun sa testimony ang binasa nyo kanina. Anong taon nga po kayo sinimulang abusuhin uh, ayon sa inyong testimony at alaala? It was in October of 1993. Alright, uh, tapos ulitin ko lang po yung nabalitaan kong fasting o dry fast. So, hindi kayo pinakain, hindi kayo pinainom ng tubig, ah... Uh, Ilang araw nga po ba ginawa ito sa inyo? At wala po bang kasamahan ninyo doon na sinubukang tulungan kayo? Of course, nobody would ever dare help me because upon instruction na hindi nga ako ipak... And they did not even allow... They were not even allowed to talk to me, not nor even to come near to me. So, on the 39th day, because when you had... When you have... Fast, you had fasted, hindi naman kailangan kakain ka agad. So, there was water... Then arm, then lugaw, and then finally on the 39th day, that was the time I was able to eat rice. So yung pangalawang dry fasting, tatlong buwan, na may iba't ibang klaseng fasting for five days or seven days, one to three days na dry fasting, yes. on the fourth day may tubig o yung arm. So over three months, may ganitong series ng mga iba't ibang klase ng dry fasting. Yes po. But I was together with other workers also because they, they were also punished. But I was the longest. I stayed there for the longest uh, three, three months. And yung una pong dry fast, yung unang set ng dry, pagpapadry fast sa inyo na sampung araw, walang pagkain, walang, walang tubig. Sampung araw na walang tubig at sampung araw na walang pagkain? Yes po, that's true. Paano niyo po na-survive yun? I did not even think I would survive. Apo. Because of course, it, the, the place is cold, was cold. And then every time in the morning when I took a bath, so parang doon ko na lang na, na, nalalasap yung tubig. And after 39 days, ganun ulit, uh, pinainom muna kayo ng tubig, And, ng am, and then pinakain ng lugaw, and finally, kanin. Yes, on the 39th day. And kanina sabi nyo dun sa pangalawang set ng dry fasting sa inyo, over three months, may ibang workers pa kayong kasama, bagamat hindi sila kasing tagal na pinadry fast tulad ninyo. Bukod dyan sa pagpapadry fast, uh, yung ganyang abuso sa inyo, meron ka bang na-witness na Iba pang mga pang-aabuso sa iba pang workers. Yes po. Actually, there were workers who were placed in a, in a closed tent. Mm -hmm. Parang Bartolina. Ang, ang tawag namin doon, Bartolina. They were placed in a closed tent. But the only one who survived, she was rescued because she was dehydrated already. So the only one who survived, na yes. rescue. Yeah, it was Lani Alfaro. Tama, 
po ba na subject kayo, naging subject kayo ng attempted assassination? Uh, ito po ba yung sinabing ginawa ng angel of death? Of course, I would really think that way because I was just a mere worker, a civilian, and then why would these people come to my place, bring those light, uh, firearms, they were there, and if it was only to serve the warrant of arrest for my, the, my co-ministers, why would bring, uh, why would they have a backup car? And I was made to believe that it was really their intention to harass me and to terrorize me in my place. Uh, nung ginawa nyo ng nationwide yung caroling, din na lang sa NCR, may isa kayong leader na bawat isa may 17 to 100 carolers. Uh, at dito naman sa NCR, kung saan kayo nagsimula, naging 13 leaders na may 20 to 30 members each. So, i-multiply lang po natin. So, sila po yung pinapatawan nyo noon ng quota para mabuo yung 10 to 15 million pesos. A ano po ito? Per day? Per week? No, that's one month. Of, uh, per month. Yep, yes. Per month. And uh, so, 14 hours a day sila. Pwedeng nag nagkakarol, nag-fundraise, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yes po. Ganun po, ganun po katagal. Because we were, we were always made to believe that we were sinners. And we, we do accept that we were sinners. So we had to go through fasting. You have to undergo dry fasting as a punishment? A spiritual discipline on the first. Oh. Talaga, spiritual discipline. Kung, di, kung doon yung discipline, punishment. Diba? Okay. Yung yes. pangalawa. Yes po. O, yung pangalawa, was it what? Pan punishment also yung pangalawa? Mas lalong punishment on the second round. Maybe okay. because they saw me alive still and still kicking. Um, it was not their intention to really see me alive. Okay. That's why I had my se second series of fasting. But sa uh, observation mo, tagal ka dyan sa kingdom eh, meron, uh, you, you also undergo fasting as a part of a ritual, not as a punishment. Tama? Tama. Yes, there are many times. As severe as dry fasting? No, that, mine was the, the, actually was the worst. Yun yung mga fasting na alam natin, yung babawasan yes, mo lang yung yes, quantity ng kakainin mo, siguro gano'n, ano? Yes, yun ba yung meaning ng, yun yung sa ritual? Yes, okay. ritual. Meron kang kirikwento na, although hindi ikaw yung involved, sabi mo lang na may, may close tent, may mga gano'n, tapos may mga ministro na sila na mismo nagpatakas dun sa mga pinapanish, you no? Know? So, uh, so, naawa na rin siguro sila na baka, napaka-severe ng mga punishment. But that's, you did not experience that, eh. Kaya medyo, ano na yan. Did you, did you actually witness it? Yes, sir. Uh, meron silang system of uh, punishment. Baka yung mga, yung mga severity naman ng mga punishment, ba, sa, baka some of these punishments already crossed the line, ano? Na they, may, they may amount to already violation of the revised penal code. Sige. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you also, uh, Minority Leader. Um, so, Mr. Resita, uh, Ate Ging, uh, salu uh, uh, again, salamat kaayo and please stay on for uh, the rest of our hearing, lalo na kung may ibang mga issues na ma-raise na gusto rin namin itanong sa inyo. A former pastoral and victim survivor of sexual abuse at the hands of Apollo Kiboloy, uh, Yulia's video uh, at that time as Elias Sofia. By himself, like for example, he had the key of each room, and just in the middle of the night, he come to my room and uh, have uh, sex with me. To fellowship to me, like, are you ready to sacrifice everything to God, to the Father? Ito na guys, ang legit na lalong magpapa in love sa partner mo. Ang Sweet Night Fragrance Collection na nangungunang bumibenta ng 1.9 million sa TikTok shop. Siyempre kasama ang favorite flavor na whipped vanilla and spice, wild vanilla at ang men's blue. 99 pesos lang, pero legit na amoy mayaman at recommended by influencer. So order ka na? I like pastor. Of course, I already sacrificed. I leave my job, I leave my school, I leave my friends and my parents. I already sacrificed a lot of so what? What do you mean? I cannot understand because I already sacrificed and put the life that I choose and I live and uh, I believe that this is God's way for me. So, and they were just like, even your body, you can sacrifice. When he see that there is no Ukrainian girls and I'm alone, so he start more and more to talk to me. 
are you want to sacrifice are you want to sacrifice everything even your body uh, uh, i want you to massage pastor's uh, feet before he sleep when at the jack call me for night uh, to massage him uh, I, i didn't think that this is what will happen even though i was nervous and she saw that i am crying but i am still do what they want me to do i wake up and put he by myself went out and put me in his in his room and after that uh, little by little he just turned to me and he removed my clothes and uh, i even can because i was very shocked i was like i cannot explain because i i was nervous if this is what happened he just removed my clothes and have the next day when i heard this uh, that come pastoral and 12 years old uh, i start to fight with pastor and ask why is it normal uh, on camera right now with glasses yes yes she's the one so that's the jack roy you mentioned in your previous video <laughs> yes all right thank you miss yulia um how many how many ukrainian pastorals uh, did kiboloy have when you were there uh, it's about uh, about uh, 10 i think 10 uh-huh. all right including yourself so 10 you and nine about nine yeah, others if you refuse to have sex with uh with apollo kiboloy what do you think would happen actually uh, we try uh to um, Uh, to avoid this kind of uh, service but uh, because uh, when you believe that he is the son of god uh, and uh, you will do whatever he want us to do if you will try to uh, deny uh, they will uh, punish you and there is a lot of really uh, psychological psychological uh, instrument Uh, that they will use on you that uh, even one day will not be enough to mention uh, everything uh, they will punish and call us uh, scold us for a meeting and put uh, us in shame that saying that we are uh, ungrateful uh, because pastor give uh, us everything and you just don't want to give uh, sacrifice your body like jesus christ sacrifice and of course they always will use uh, the bible as an instrument to convince us to do it uh, and they always in the same time they want uh, us to feel to twist our mind to feel that this kind of uh, service it's a very big privilege so we uh, uh, will be willing to do it with our uh, with our will so he will say that uh there because nobody can deny that there is a pastoral ministry even uh mr kibolo himself and everybody knows that only girls and young and beautiful women are uh, included there uh several times that i try to deny uh this uh, ministry of sleeping with him like uh, and he will be the one to put the schedule who will be the one tonight you said that if you refused to give those kinds of service that sexual service uh, as you tried to do uh, several times that you would be punished uh, including yeah. through psychological instruments yes you yeah. said that and me and some other ukrainian girls whom i know uh we like said like uh, we never uh, go and put our names uh, in the schedule by himself like for example he had the key of each room and just in the middle of the night he come to my room and uh, have uh, sex with me then uh, and you cannot uh, you cannot run away you cannot say i don't want because if you say you i don't want he said you didn't overcome your flesh pastor had uh, free access to the rooms he even had keys Uh, to the rooms so about the schedule that you mentioned miss yulia uh do you mean monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday uh it was 
a young girl or a, a young and beautiful woman, no rest day, every day there was somebody scheduled. Yeah, there's uh, for every night there's he never stay alone. It's a big privilege if he will pray on you. And I said, okay. And uh, I just lay down. Uh, she turned off the light and she uh, go out from the room. And then Mr. Kibola came and he started to massage my back. And of course, I didn't feel com uh, comfortable, but it, I also cannot uh, escape. Miss Roy, uh, quickly lang po at this point, uh, narinig nyo yung mga sinabi ni Miss Yulia. Uh, do, you, do you confirm what she said? Uh, uh, inaamin nyo ba yung mga sinasabi niya na kayo daw ang nag-groom sa kanya para kay Pastor? Good afternoon po, Senator. Um, I want to invoke my right to remain silent. And I'm also invoking my right against self-incrimination since nasa korte na po ito. Salamat po. Alright. Babalikan na lang po namin uh, kayo para sa ilan pang mga tanong uh, mamaya. Um, Miss Yulia, just uh, for a last question from me at this point. Miss Yulia, you sent us a copy of an audio file that came into your possession. Uh, now, noting that the Philippines Republic Act number 9208 as amended grants immunity from liability to a victim of human trafficking who transmits a recording involving a violation of that law and noting further that this audio file uh, had been also circulating already on the internet, the committee will play this audio file now. So please uh, stay with us, Miss Yulia, while we play the audio file. Ang makagamit sa inyo ang anak lang. Wala'y lain. Mauna'y kabubuto niya. Ikaw, panik, may number one niya. Pag nilapas ni mo, imo nilapastangan ang balahod. At yun kang ulay ko kaluoy. Pinagi sa duha o tulok ka saksi. Basta natatutok sa ilang angel of death. When the opportunity presents itself, patay sila. Kato yung soul ni mo. At tinay, yung mo yung soul sa gawas. Kung doon natin na, wala yung bilhin na na. Hindi na kalalo ng commitment na ito rin. Is this the file? Is this the audio file that came into your possession? Yes. Yes. Do you recognize the voice speaking in the audio file? Yes. Whose voice is that? This is the voice of Mr. Kibogoy. Stephanie Ibarra? Yeah. Yeah, yes. This is Who Ibarra. is Stephanie Ibarra? Uh, Stephanie Ibarra is a uh, main senior in the kingdom and she is a uh, main assistant of uh, uh, Mr. Kibaloy. Mm. Stephanie uh, Ibarra or Pane was trying to leave the ministry. Yeah, yeah. She was All trying right. to uh, leave the ministry. And every time she, uh, uh, she try, they very... Uh, in brutal way, in very arrogant way, they will put her back to be uh, always loyal to uh, Mr. Kibuloy as his like, How brutal and arrogant control. way. Like for example, there was one time she wanted to run away from the house of Manila. We stayed there and before uh, we have a concert day there and we stay in worker workers' house. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to run away. She jumped uh, from the window together with her oh. uh, with her uh, uh, luggage. And how, how when high they found the out, uh, I don't know really. Uh, but she jumped from the, a window. To yeah, escape. yeah, okay. yeah. She, she was trying to go out. Uh, she is like her uh, his trophy, and he said uh, like even to us like if she will leave. How I will handle uh, the other girls because uh -huh. she is like he she used her as example that must be loyal that must be uh, um, single because uh, why was she Kiboloi's trophy? Uh, because this is her position at the kingdom sacrifice our life uh, through the body. <laughs> Of Kibuloy. If Kibuloy could not control uh, Stephanie or Pane Ibarra anymore, what would happen? Uh, Miss Yulia? Yes. 
I don't know because uh, he always put the fear on us that if you will go out, you will become a prostitute. All the men will use you, and mm. here only I using you, and you have this privilege. I really try to uh, broke myself to follow your uh, uh, rules in the kingdom, but you lead us in a very bad experience. 